Kia ora guys, welcome back to another episode of The Wholesome Half Hour. I'm Mackenzie. I'm Sarah. And this week we're going to be talking about choosing subjects for next year and how important it might, may or may not be. Oh, and as per, we're going to be answering all your questions and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So this like, episode was sparked by like a little DM we got on Instagram last week from Lan saying that... So that, shout out. Shout out. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, they were saying that their parents were saying that they should have an idea for what job they should have or what job they might want to have by now, they're in year 11. Subject options are due next week and I'm a little unsure of what subjects to choose. I'm not really keen to drop any. What would you recommend doing when choosing options for next year? Yeah, so this is a real tough one and then moving into moving into year 11 or? Um, not sure, I don't think it makes a huge difference. It's either year 11 now or yeah, about to be. Yeah, around year 11 or 12. Um, yeah. yeah, it doesn't make a huge difference I think. I think it's something that not only, I think it's almost something that parents can have an idea in their head about because of school, because mm. I think school very much sets up the idea that the subjects that you were going to be taking is going to be very, very influential yeah. to Skills potential job opportunities. Um, I, 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 if I was to have like one criticism, is I feel like schools definitely really hype up like the course selection thing. Oh, and of course it's important, and of course there's like value in it. But I feel like I feel like there's a lot of pressure to be like, well, this like year twelve course selection is going to decide the entire rest of your life. Yeah. Which is just like not true. Yeah. Even mm. though it can feel like that. Mm. And obviously, you know, like equally like being in a subject that you find real boring for an entire year is like not ideal either. Yeah. So it is kind of important. But I do think it's sometimes like it's about finding a balance between like, you know, it's an important decision, but it's not like a decision Life that's gonna break or make or break your entire life. Yeah, I think when we were when I was in high school at least, I very much remember being sort of fed this idea that the subjects that you take now dictates what you'll be able to take in NCEA, which will dictate what you'll be able to take at university, which will dictate the what career that you're you? able to have for the rest which of your life. How much money you get? Yeah. Which will dictate if you win lotto. And we'll forever be running. House, if you get to move to Auckland. Yeah, we'll forever be if running on that hedonic Dubai. treadmill. Is is I what like a, a treadmill. A hedonic one. I don't know what it is. Oh, a hedonic treadmill is like this idea of um, you're constantly chasing oh, like, like chasing happiness. Like a piece of chicken. Like yeah. The, the yeah. So like <laughs> people argue that like humans are hedonistic creatures and that we're just like pleasure seeking, yeah. like um, punishment averse. And so the idea of a hedonic treadmill is this I'm idea. I'm water right now instead of coffee. I think that's quite punishing. I'm so sorry for you. But... Yeah, the, the idea of the hedonic treadmill is that um, every time you, you aim towards something and it'll make you happy, but there's always going to be something more. The treadmill's yeah. always going to keep going and yeah. you're never going to like stop. Yeah. And I think, I think that can be applied to like a lot of different things. Yeah. So I'm not just spinning this yarn to be like, oh, do you know what a hedonic well, treadmill is? Yeah, I study psychology. Yeah, did you know oh, that oh. I went to a lecture once? Yeah. Like, no, like I think it, it can be applied to a lot of things, but I think for... Um, like choosing subjects and stuff like that, I think a lot of weight is put into your course selection now when it doesn't have as much bearing as you think it will. And I, one thing that we always say, I feel like I've said it like a gajillion times now, and I'm going to keep on saying it because I think it's important, is that if you, for whatever reason, um, have missed a subject that you wanted to take to get into university, this is to get into university, mind you. If you want to go to university. If you, if you so choose. Um, if you like forget to or do, accidentally don't take a subject that you're supposed to take for uni or if you um, fail an external that you needed as um, part of your um, guaranteed entry for a specific course you can always do bridging courses there's yeah. always a way around it and what you do in high school isn't going to 100% dictate what you can do at university and there are so many like so so many university courses that you actually don't need any oh, prerequisites yeah. from NCEA at all to get into them. There's so many university courses that would have no benefit from any prerequisite courses because yeah. they're just like can, like there's just stuff that's like a completely different world to like yeah you know, some like, of the stuff that you do in high school yeah yeah like high school subjects Hardly any of them would even come close to things like, I don't know, like 
IR or international relations or yeah, political, science. political science, like psychology. Yeah. Like you can, there are like real niche NCA mm. subjects of psychology and of like crime and society and like even legal studies, but they're not every school offers them. Like that's definitely a minority. And yeah. even the ones that do, it's very do much it. set out as like more like social sciences yeah, than anything. Right. I think I don't think I'm it really taps like, into the actual subject how it would be in university. And as it is, you don't need NCA as a prerequisite for it anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so like, I guess one, um, I guess the question is like, if you were like, how would you approach? course selection like mm. what 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 would your approach be um i, I always know. i always took what i enjoyed yeah. and my parents were always very much into that as well um they just said take what you enjoy um because obviously that's what you're going to be better at yeah i took certain sciences um and a math mm. i took math of stats and um chem and bio and then like my other subjects let me think about year 13 was like History, media studies. Sorry, I dropped English. Um, I also dropped English in year 13. Yeah. Shut up. I actually, I enjoy English. I don't enjoy NCA English. So that's another kettle of fish. I'll, I enjoy I'll, writing. I don't enjoy, yeah, NCA English. Was yeah, I don't have a lot of time for NCA English. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so I think, I think for course selections, I think definitely go for potentially what you've already um, sort of been taking this year as you have said like that you don't really want to drop anything um generally as the years go on your courses do become more narrow as you take them for the full year as opposed to like half a year or something like that like you do in year nine and ten but aside from that i think you can very much like just consider taking all the same subjects that you do now if you enjoy them all like i don't think there's anything Mm. wrong with that and i think on top of that um I very much do not subscribe to the idea of take a subject or get this degree because you think it's going to get you a job that's going to get you a lot of money because you're going to hate it and you're going to end up dropping out. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've seen it happen so many times. I've, I've known people who are perfectly able, like they're, they're smart, smart people. It's got nothing to do with ability, but they're just not interested. Yeah. And I think you can't force that. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to give like two like two routes here uh, and one route is pro- is the route that I guess I took and is very similar to the along the lines of yours which is like what what am I interested in like what do I enjoy doing and just pursuing that um, I guess if we were to if you wanted to take the approach um, where you do have like a like a final goal in mind like you do mm. kind of know what you wanted to do I'd try like reverse engineer that a little bit so like yeah. I think about where do I want to be in 10 years and then reverse engineer that so like I don't know say um, I want to uh, be working um, as an accountant yeah, at PricewaterhouseCoopers in 10 years I have years. no clue who that is but continue um, that concerns me but that's alright uh, moving on it's like one of the biggest four accounting companies in the world do I look okay. like someone who's familiar <laughs> with accounting practices I don't study accounting I'd just like to make that clear so's Josh um, <laughs> but I, I think about like what kind of job, like, is there a job that I'd want to have before that? Mm. What kind of, do I need to do for accounting? You'd be looking at doing mm. a uni degree and then doing an industry qualification yeah. and kind of trying to build that up. But I'd also, what, like, I'd reverse engineer it, but then I'll also be open to change along the way yeah. and accepting that, like, even though I might start along this path, the way I might end up, like, I might not end up at PricewaterhouseCoopers doing accounting. I might end up doing sales somewhere yeah. else, which is, like, a, quite a different thing. But, like, if you have that outcome in mind, like it is sometimes nice to be able to develop like yeah. that plan, but then also be opening to like kind of seizing the moment a little yeah. bit along the way. I think yes, actually on that line, I think I did in some ways kind of do a bit of that where I knew what I wanted to study and I was fortunate enough to actually get to uni and still enjoy it. Mm. But I very much did think, oh well, I know like for psych, I know that um, bio isn't a prerequisite but it would definitely be helpful yeah. so I'll take the subject because I yeah. know it would like help set me up for it yeah. but not necessarily be like required mm. and I, th- I think in that same way um, technically well, you should hope that those subjects you will enjoy because mm. you want to maybe work in that field one day yeah, yeah and it's also like 
again, like you don't have to, like you don't have to get it right the first time. Like I know, I'm not sure if I've ever told you this, but in year 13, I took media studies, digital technology, maths, physics, or calculus, physics, chemistry, because I was thinking of doing engineering at the beginning of that year. But then by the end of that year, well, well, and now at uni, I study political science, media studies, and marketing, none of which require any sort of like science background but I also still don't like consider that like a, a waste. waste because like y- you'd be surprised where this stuff like pops up like yeah. I'll see like some I don't know like random science video in my YouTube feed and I like I still find that stuff interesting yeah and like I, I'm like because I have that like background from high school I understand it like a bit more than I yeah. might otherwise yeah um so I definitely don't consider it a waste of time but it's also never too late yeah um to kind of change your mind? I think I think it very much taps into this idea that we were talking about last week of the subjects that you take, if they don't directly benefit mm. you, yeah. whether that be towards NCA credits, whether that be towards a university qualification, it doesn't mean that it is therefore yes, a waste of your yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's definitely not. And I, I know that this isn't what this... Um, you know, student is arguing right now, but I think it's something that people definitely kind of can pitfall into sometimes is this idea of, oh, well, if it isn't going to benefit me in a tangible sense, then it's not worthwhile. But yeah. that is definitely not the case. You'd also be, like, shocked at how, like, where, like, things cross over a lot more than you would mm. expect. Yeah. Like, um Admittedly, this is a somewhat like closer feel than maybe like science and like media, but like media and political science like crossover from a theoretical perspective like all the time. Like it yeah. happens a lot, um, and you do actually find like these weird like connections, like all the stuff that you do in like calc and maths and stuff that will play into like any sort of like commerce degree. Like even yeah. in marketing, you do like keeps of like numbers and stuff. Which yeah, is, um, yeah, an interesting beast, but. I would, I think for the most part, I would encourage to take the subjects that you think you might later use at university or, and, but yeah, do give yourself wiggle room. Like, um, mum or, you know, my mum always encouraged me to take, uh, um, like, a. oh no, how do I say this? Um, to take like a, um, like a fun fun subject. subject, That's not the word we used for it, but. Uh, yeah, like a like a fun subject, like is, a low low like low stakes fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, a, obviously, you still like. So for me, mine was media studies, but I still worked really hard in it. Like, I still got for the most part like merits and yeah, like if, like merit excellence kind of like yeah. zone that I was in. Like, so it wasn't like a, I'm just like scraping through to get credits, but it was like a take a subject that you maybe find a bit lighter. Yeah. You know, it doesn't. You don't have to give yourself like palate cleanser for the mind. Yeah, a yeah. little bit, definitely. And I think that was definitely very helpful. And I mean, I really, really enjoyed the subject. And you know, it's again, I'm not doing that kind of stuff now, yeah. but it's definitely like very. You know, I don't regret it at all, and I still find it useful. No, absolutely. Um, just while we're on this topic of um, kind of like looking at what you're interested in and pursuing that with your course selection and like your career um i thought it's also important to we had an article that jordan actually wrote on our website a while ago i'll put it in the i'll put it in the show notes um but the title is called like why following your passion might not be a good thing and i guess uh, i'll just kind of like summarize it i won't if you want to read the whole thing you should totally check it out i'll put the link um in the show notes but i feel like there is sometimes when people talk about like following your passions and doing what you're interested in there's like a pressure to like have one thing that you're passionate about and yeah. interested in or it's like which, oh you know that person oh she draws really well or oh you know that person she's really smart like which like or, when you're like 16 or 17 or 18 or 19 or 25 or 26 or 27 like there's like a lot of people like it's a very like arbitrary thing like it's a thing yeah. that a lot of people who have like been successful in their field say because like that's been their thing, but that hasn't been like, I don't know, like I'm sure Albert Einstein did it like grow like at age twelve was it like I'm actually gonna do some like cool physics stuff. Yeah. Like that's my passion. Yeah. Like the, you can you can kind of like see it at the end, but like there's like if you're like this is such a 16, process. 17, 18, 19, 20, if you don't have a passion, like that's not something to be worried about. Yeah. Um And it doesn't even have to like if you have multiple passions, which we're gonna talk yeah. about again 
soon in another question, but like, yeah, it doesn't need to be like this one thing that you're like good at or known for, or this one thing that you want to do. Like that's just, it's, we live in an organic society, people. We're no longer in the mechanical society. We don't get stuck in one job for the rest of our lives. Oh we, yeah. That's, that's the other thing. I feel like, I guess most people know this, especially once they hit the workforce, but like just, yeah. just uh, because I feel like I'm not sure if school like makes this obvious enough because I don't think they do. I know in uh. my time it's a, it, like it definitely wasn't made super obvious. Most people like don't now, like when I say most people, I literally mean like 90 plus percent of people mm. like will not work a single job or even in a single industry for the rest of their lives. Yeah, most people will work in many industries and many jobs yeah. throughout their life, and so like the reason I say that is like. Like, you, university almost, like, only really sets you up for, like, your first, like, job. Like, even mm. after, after that, the, like, return on investment starts to diminish quite rapidly. Mm. Um, and I, I just mentioned that because I, it's just, like, again, one of those things to kind of take the pressure off. Yeah. Like, this idea that you are setting up your entire life through, yeah. like, your course selection at school and then at uni as well. Yeah, I think, I think it has, it's a very easy rabbit hole to sort of, like, go down into mm. but it is something that you can work out of quite easily yeah. you know whether that be taking a bridging course whether that be you know just taking what you enjoy and seeing where it like goes a quote card instagram quote card what like just a photo of you and be like just you can take, take bridging a courses. bridging course no, <laughs> yeah <laughs> for the people in the back <laughs> no um but yeah it's it's one of those things that you can do multiple things and mm. what you do now in high school isn't going to be the be all and end all. Yeah. You can try to maximise it if you have a clear idea yeah. of what you want to do, but it's okay if you don't have an yeah. idea of what you want to do. It's okay if you have multiple things that you maybe want to do. And if you don't have an idea of what you want to do, or if you have multiple, if you have multiple things that you have an idea of what you want to do, take like find a way of like Make finding out what those things are all about. Like mm. when you leave high school, like you have, there's like you've got so much like time to like try to work out. Like yeah. if you want like there's nothing wrong with working like if there's like four or five things you're curious about try get four or five jobs over two or three years six months each one year each whatever and like just taste like and yeah. find out what all these experiences are like yeah um like don't feel pressured to like know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life yeah like straight out of high 100%. school i think actually just on that note as well before we do move on to um other stuff is that for those who aren't thinking of university, mm. high school is de definitely still has its place, and there are other um, there are things that you can do in high school that are more beneficial as well. So um, you know, if you're thinking of maybe moving into like a trade or something like that, you can definitely take certain subjects which lend itself to that. Yeah. Um, and you can go on further to do polytech stuff um, if you, if you so desire. You can do like pre apprenticeship courses and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it, I, th I feel like it's got a very similar sort of flavour to it in that you can take stuff now which may be beneficial for you later on but aren't going to be like the entire game changer. Like mm -hmm. think of it as more of like a, a helpful addition as opposed to like a necessity. Yeah. One more thing, just another point that I wanted to make is I feel like there's like a little misconception, especially like, I, don't, I definitely feel like felt like this at high school. We're like... It like you, it seems like people who are at uni like have their lives together and know what they want to do. That's not true. Like a lot of people at uni like feel very much the same way that like most high schoolers do about like careers and what they want to do with their life. And a lot of people, if like if, if I were to be like really blunt, and I don't know, some uni students might not be happy about this, but I reckon it's definitely true for a lot of people at uni, more than half. A lot of people at uni are, like, buying time, like, deciding what they want to do with their life, which is okay. Like, you have heaps of time to decide that, but, like, don't think that. Like, okay, a lot so of people who have their... <laughs> a lot of people who, like... I don't know, I feel like a lot of people are, like, fronting and faking it, like, they do, like, know what they want to do with their life when they don't, and I oh, feel like 100%. when people are honest about it, they get given, like, a bad rap, even though that's, like, 
you're just like most literally people. just before we started this episode i was having a yarn to Saren about how i'm not sure at all what i'm doing next See, year I've, like, I've got another year at uni so i've got I've he's got, got another time. he's got another bumper year i've bought some more time yeah that i literally I lit- you literally have to pay to go to uni so you're literally, i'm literally spending money to buy it's the time. dollars it's so many dollars Lol. but yeah no I, I think, yeah, I think that is a big thing as well. It's like when you think, like, you think that people who go to university, once they get out or even, you know, before that, Mm -hmm. um, all these doors are suddenly open to them. And, like, to an extent, yes, but to an extent, no. So many doors are open to you, like, straight out of high school as well. I feel like that's that's underplayed a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like, I have, like, I, I have friends that are the same age as me who make more money like not that everything's about money but just just to it's one of the simplest terms um i have friends uh who are like straight out of high school in jobs making more money than i will see for the next like five years at least yeah um like it is not there's like so much like i feel like universities put on like a big pedestal um, yeah which isn't always justified success Okay, just one one last thing. I know we've said <laughs> yeah. one more thing a couple of times now, yeah. but one last thing is like this idea of to be a successful individual, you need to have a good job, you need to be making good money or something. There is more to life. Oh, absolutely. There is so much, and and I'm not I'm not saying it no, no, that no, 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 like no. we subscribe to this idea, yeah. but I think it's something that society in general oh, like no, lends itself absolutely. towards is this idea that success is associated with work. Cash is king. Yeah, cash is king. Like, we love our capitalist society. Shout out. But, like, I think there is so much more in, like, there is so much more to your life that influences you than just, like, your job. In the exact same way that there is so much more to you as a student than just school. And I think that's sometimes yes, very overshadowed. Yeah. No, that's, that's a really good point. Yeah. So... Keep that in mind, team. You're an individual outside of the institutions that we're put into. Yeah. Um, along the lines of this topic, we had another com- question come in from Cat Bull. I don't know. You wrote this, right? Uh, I, th- I think her name's Cat. I'm going to call her Cat. Okay. I'm so sorry if that's not. If it's Catherine, you're, you're now Cat to me. Subs. Uh, I want to be an engineer by day and a musician by night because I love music, but it's hard to make a career out of it. How would you juggle working towards two different career options? Uh, so I'd say a couple of things. Firstly, like I, uh, for those of I guess I guess people kind of know this, but I, I like make videos here and I make videos elsewhere as well. So like, I, I consider myself part of the creative industries. Um, I would consider you part of a creative thank industry. You. I appreciate that. I appreciate being validated. It makes me feel good about life. I'm constantly <laughs> gonna validate you, B. Um, it's one thing I would say is if you want to be like if you like in any creative industries now like. The like barriers to entry have like broken down like heaps compared to like twenty years ago, right? Yeah. Like, if you want to make a video, you can literally like pull out your phone, make yeah. a video, put I it mean, on they're YouTube they're, like, um, in you know, a minute. The democratic platforms, you yeah. Know. Um, so like, if you're a musician, like this is some like real practical advice. Like, I would straight up like make it, like I would go home tonight and make it like a Facebook page or an Instagram account or a yeah. YouTube page and just like record music and mm. like just upload it like I, yeah. i'd do that like like i'd start that like right now <laughs> and i'd do that like all the way through uni yeah. um just because there's no better way to like learn than actually doing no i think i think it is really like practical advice and i think um in, in the same way that at high school we discussed having like a fun subject like yeah. if you want to study um engineering mm. i know engineering is one of the courses that doesn't have a lot of wiggle room yeah but you can still do like some other stuff on the Mm. side of it as well so you know you can be doing your own independent Mm. work and you could still be like studying in a more formal atmosphere yeah there's nothing wrong with studying engineering and then like also like making like spending like a lot of your own time like making music there's absolutely nothing wrong with that i mean it's obviously going to be more work yeah but that's if that's something that you enjoy then it's absolutely fine yeah like Siren Siren works some ridiculous hours like I actually don't know how you function as a human being oh that's an interesting question I don't know either it's a a bit of a mystery one of the seven wonders of this world (laughs) how do do Siren do how do I do um but no so I would yeah I would really so like yeah if you want to be an engineer like go for that as well but like yeah if you want to be a musician I would like seriously just like 
like make music whether it's your own music or covers mm. or whatever and like put it online and like start like growing an audience and don't worry about like heaps of people want like a million subscribers overnight like that doesn't happen but no. like if you chip away at it for years and years like you'll be surprised like put some work in like make yeah. some make some cool tunes yeah do some good stuff and i think at the end of the day as well like it is, you know, we do have those. Like, oh, those sorry, th- sorry. This is this is what I was, this is what I wanted to say. Um, I feel like I don't know, in like the creative industries, I feel like a lot of people like kind of wait for an opportunity to happen with it. As like I don't know, like Orchestrate like someone your comes reality. up to you, like yeah, like here's the thing, like if you wanted to be an all black, right, you wouldn't just like sit around like waiting for like an opportunity to happen. Yeah. you'd like you'd try to be in like the first 15 at your school yeah. and you'd play real hard and you'd try to get into a rep team or something like that. Train so like, and, yeah. and obviously like the frameworks for like creative industries aren't exactly the same, but like you need to like, you have to, you, if you want it to become a reality, you have to do something. Yeah. Like you can't expect to be an all black if you're not like training every day. The same way that like you can't expect to like make it as a musician if you're not like actually like yeah. making music and taking yeah. strides towards that yeah i think like any skill you need to cultivate it and it's it's very odd this barrier that we kind of have between um sort of i guess like different fields mm. and that you know for sport it's so normal to train twice a week and yeah. then like do stuff in your own time and all that kind of thing but in other societies it's Oh, not other society. Sorry, other fields. Yeah. It's less like we I think like the in, in to art. Sometimes is less there is this, obvious. yeah, I think or there there is like this attitude around it of it will happen overnight. Mm. And like, look, this isn't Chicago. I think it's it's kind of like everyone knows that they like they literally like if you're not fit. Or even if you are fit, if you don't know how to play rugby, you can't just go onto a rugby field and like play yep. the All Blacks and have a good time. Like it's just not going to work, right? <laughs> you got a big but I feel like coming. I feel like there is kind of like an illusion where you, you can do that in other areas where that's simply not true. Like you have to put and in the work as well. I think I think the issue there therein lies is that there are exceptions to that, and those are the people that are widely publicised. And but I think it's then, important to bear in mind, oh, e- yeah, even then there like, is generally think, a lot of work that goes into any, the background. Like, there's very few, if any, famous people who, like, hadn't worked for ages. Like, even, yeah. you, even if you look at, like, like, I don't know, like, classic controversial example, like Logan Paul. These guys have been making, these guys have been working for, like, 10 years. Yeah. Like, Disney and then, like, YouTube now. And they work, like, every day. However, like, there are some other YouTubers that have totally exploited the algorithm and just, like... I don't buy that. Mm. No one make no one's like first video becomes like a oh, viral hit no, 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 and then no, no, like no, they no. make a career out of it. Like you, ha- there's, no, there's always there's like a lot of work that yeah. goes into that that people like like to no, shove and, I, and not talk about. Yeah, I'm not here to dispute that. I definitely agree, but I think that there is, I think, regardless of whether or not there is a lot of work done in the background, the way in which people, if you're going to take someone like Logan Paul for example, mm. let's let's roll with this this wonderful horse. If you're going to go with someone like Logan Paul, he advertises himself yeah. in a way like he is an oh, overnight yeah, sure. dude, which is... He plays the game. Yeah, he, he plays the game. And I'm not actually it's, a it's, Logan Paul fan. I just enjoy the slide of discussion. Anybody who's... Anyway. Is that the right, is that the right clothing line? I don't know. I don't know. Have it as it's, have that's really lines. not it's something a, my brain has decided to commit. Oh, I'll show you for the after this. I'd very much rather not to. All I want for Christmas is that Jake Paul merch. Um, but I think it, it, even regardless of whether or not they've done a lot of work in the background, it's the way in which they present themselves that people adhere to. Mm. And because they advertise themselves no, this in this point. way, Sorry. it's what people take away from it. Yeah. You know, it, it just like we talk about in a lot of things, people only see the end result and mm. they don't so much see what goes on in the background you know they don't see the old crappy things that they made years and years and years ago you know what I mean like you're absolutely correct yeah I think people have it in the idea especially in the creative industry that something is going to happen you can wake up like never have made a video before and make like a video one day and get like a million subs yeah yeah yeah, and that's exactly it and I think people have this idea of um you know being viral and stuff but even like a lot of stuff that goes viral like do you watch anything else from that person like you know this one thing yeah. like it's like this idea even of if one you have something wonder. go you know I mean? viral like 
if you want to continue that traction, you have to put a lot of work in. Yeah. And the other thing... Uh, it's not easy. Like, in any any real YouTuber that you watch or any, you know, big person on Instagram mm-hmm. or anything like that will say, it's a lot of work. There is so much that goes on behind the scenes yeah. that you don't see. And, like, one thing I'd say is, like, yeah, there's, like, rare occasions where people get lucky. Or there, it's, like... And you can work smart as well. You can yeah. work smart. But... The biggest variable that is in your control is like how much, like how hard you work and how much you work. Yeah. That is like a variable that you have absolute 100% control over. Yeah, so because luck you don't. You should take that to your advantage. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think that's just it though. Like you mentioned like before and that's all it is and that's the exception, not the rule, you know, and I think, mm. but I, I just think that the way in which um, a lot of these kind of things are set up is that it does present itself in a way of, hey, I'm a regular normal person like you, and now I'm a big old famous person, and I'm not like you, but I will continue to exploit you. Yeah. Hi, Logan Paul. Moving on. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about Logan Paul. But um, what were we talking about again? We've, we've, boy, we've gone down Sorry, a rabbit hole. No, 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 you're absolutely fine. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. I think, being I think an engineer th- by day, musician yeah. by night, totally feasible. Yeah, I, th- I think um, that is a hundred percent something that you can work towards. Hundred percent. It's, it's I've actually, fun. actually, just just because it's music, I actually have a university lecturer. This guy's like like a full time lecturer who like DJs at That's like a club on the weekends. That is very beautiful. Um, yeah, so like I academics are cool too. Long. I think a lot of people have um, you know a few different gigs going on, like. I think that's another thing, and again, we were talking about it before, is you don't have to do just one thing, and you don't have to be known for doing just one thing. Like, you are more than being, hey, that person that plays football really good, or, hey, that girl that's played guitar since she was like five, because her parents are vicariously oh, yeah. trying to live their dreams through her. I'm very sorry, I'm not, I'm going to stop talking but for a while. Do you feel bad that you can't play guitar? Is that the real moral of the story? I do yeah. wish I played guitar. I actually, I, I can play instruments, but I can't play guitar. I wish, I, I, wish I had a talent, but my parents never tried to live vicariously learn, through me, so I never got a talent. I need to, yeah, time is a valuable asset, lol. Um, time is extremely valuable. Cool. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah. If you have questions <laughs> for next week, please send us a little we're on Direct time this message. week. That's beautiful. Yeah, I know. I kept the like thing there because you know, like what I forget is I have to edit this later, and the longer the show is, the more I have to watch it for. So you know, thirty minutes hits. Are I you telling me that you don't enjoy show. listening to my voice later on? Um, when I leave this show until it comes out on Thursdays, when I leave it until Wednesday night to edit, I do prefer that it is as close to half an hour as possible <laughs> and not longer than I want it to be. Lol. That's. That, I think that's a very valid point. The length of the show decides what time I get to go to sleep. It was 2 a.m. 2 a.m. last week. I was just like 2.30 long, yeah. yeah. Don't do that, guys. I have to be here at work. At but yeah, early. if you guys have any more thoughts about any of this, um, yeah, definitely check out the Jordan's article on yeah. uh, why following your passion is not always a good thing. Um, and if you guys have any more questions about anything the like this, DM. slide into our old DMs. Get subscribed, listen along. Yeah. podcast. Yeah. Tune in on the train, car, boat, horse. I don't know how else people get to school. Surely someone gets to school on a horse. Surely that's a thing in like rural New Zealand. I don't want to know where they're plugging their stuff in. I don't know. Anyway. Like what? 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 Anyway. Plugging the horse in? <laughs> Recharge the horse. Go and plug it in. <laughs> Go and get some power from the that's horse. That's so not what I was. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. And if you guys have an idea for an entire episode, so I mean, um, Lance, I think, was yeah, only really asking so a question, but we thought it would be good for a whole episode. So that nah, was really good. Yeah, shout out and thank you because it's. Uh, I think I think we've had some good chat this episode. So thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs>